Hey guys, it's Melanie. Welcome back. I hope you are having a great day. In today's video, I want to share some skincare updates. Um, I have recently incorporated a few new skincare products into my routine, and after I have used those products for at least six to eight weeks, um, I usually like to do these skincare updates. So I have four products here that have recently been incorporated into my routine. Before we get into the updates on these four products, I wanna let you guys know how I personally handle testing products and also what my skin type is, kind of what I'm looking for in terms of what I expect out of skincare at this point in my life. I think that that is probably helpful when it comes to you trying to figure out whether any of these products might potentially make sense for you. So I will go ahead and list and link all four of these products in the description box down below. If you'd like to purchase these items, um, feel free to check out the description box. I will put links down there, and if there are any discount codes available, I will also include those in the description box as well. So first of all, the way that I personally test out skincare products is I take a look at my skincare routine and whatever the new thing is that I'm trying to incorporate, I essentially try to see if there is anything in my existing routine that is somewhat similar in formulation or I guess you could say somewhat similar in terms of the types of results that you're supposed to see from that particular product. So what I will do is take what I have been using out of the routine and replace it with the new item. And from there, I essentially look to see if the new item gets me any additional progress in terms of my skin getting better or seeing improvement in an area that maybe I'm, you know, like frustrated with or that I'm plateauing with. Um, or even, um, I also consider this a success, but if a product continues to maintain the results that I have reached at this point in my own personal skincare journey. So I have been pretty aggressive and consistent with my skincare now for, I would say, well over 10 years. And I think that skincare has really made a huge difference for me personally. My skin looks so much better now at almost 46 than it did when I was in my early 30s. Like I just didn't understand how to take care of my skin back then. And it was just a constant struggle. But I feel like I've kind of figured things out now and I'm quite happy with where my skin is for my age. So even if a product is just maintaining what I have achieved so far, sometimes that is, that's a big win too. So anyway, that is a little bit about how I approach testing skincare in terms of my skin type. So I, I'm in my mid forties. Um, my bigger problems still seem to be the fact that I do have somewhat excessive oil production for my age. Um, I've had oily skin my entire life. Um, very frustrating to deal with that. I feel like I've gotten it to a very manageable point. Um, so it's not as an, as big of a problem as it used to be, but I do still have oily skin. Um, I deal with enlarged pores, you know, kind of goes hand in hand with that oily skin. I don't really get blackheads anymore per se, but sebaceous filaments, obviously, I'm kind of always trying to stay on top of keeping my pores as clear as possible, especially since I deal with enlarged pores. Those suckers fill up fast if you let them. So um, I am quite aggressive when it comes to BHA, especially to ensure that my pores are as clean as they can be. So um, yeah, and obviously the usual, you know, like I'm, I'm starting to age, things are, you know, heading south. <laughs> you do wanna know uh, that I do get Botox. Um, I get it in my forehead, um, you know, just for the wrinkles. Listen, I, di I didn't like the deep wrinkles that were forming. I have a very expressive face, so I do get Botox in my forehead. I also get it in my masseter muscles. That's not for like beauty purposes. That is to keep me from grinding and clenching my teeth um, into the, uh, an oblivion because yeah, I, I just, I'm a clencher, I'm a grinder. It's an all day, all night thing for me. So just getting a uh, like a, what do you call those mouth guards? 
that no that wasn't doing it for me but i tell you what getting botox in my masseter muscles such a game changer i no longer clench or grind my teeth so i do have some videos about that if that's something that you struggle with so you can find that on my channel but in terms of botox anywhere else no i have some lip filler that is i haven't touched that in like a couple years at this point so um yeah that's that's what i have done to my face in terms of in-office treatments everything else is just me you know doing my red light therapy at home doing my microcurrent at home that kind of stuff so that's a little bit about my routine let's get into let's get into discussing these products let's go ahead and get started with the first skincare item this is the Asterwood copper peptides serum um, i picked this up from their amazon storefront so a few months ago i finished the uh peach and lily copper peptides I really like that serum a lot and after finishing that I wanted to try a different serum I wanted to see if I could find something a little bit more affordable than some of the other copper peptide serums that I've tried in the past so when I received an email for the Asterwood copper peptides I was like that I, that's totally worth trying I have used Asterwood uh, serums in the past and really like a, a lot of the products that they offer. I actually have their Matrixel and Argireline serum in my bathroom right now as well. I ended up just purchasing that in their like larger two ounce size because I, I know that I really like that product. I would have probably actually purchased this in a two ounce size as well, but it was only available in the one fluid ounce size at the time that I made my purchase. So I hope that they plan on offering this in some different sizes in the future, because guess what? Spoiler, I really like this. And this is super affordable, you guys. So um, again, I've got my notes here. Forgive me for reading off of them, but it helps to keep me on track. Okay, so copper peptides essentially are going to help to promote tighter skin um copper peptides also help to stimulate collagen production also with this serum um it does have sodium uh hyaluronate in it so that is going to help smooth out water loss related wrinkles so essentially this product is not only going to work underneath the surface of the skin but it's also going to help on the surface of the skin in terms of smoothing out maybe some fine lines and wrinkles that are just due to your skin maybe being a little bit dry so um the key ingredient in here this is a very short ingredient list here by the way you guys you're uh you're going to get the copper tripeptide one in this formulation there's a couple of other ingredients and then also i mentioned the sodium hyaluronate already um i really like this product you guys one it applies um very quickly in terms of how fast it absorbs into my skin i really love the texture of this product i think is what i'm trying to say when i apply this within a matter of like two minutes i feel like it has fully absorbed into my skin it's not too thick but it's also not like a super thin serum it does by the way have a bluish hue to it please know that that's normal that is from the copper peptides in here but you can see here like you know it runs a little bit but there is a little bit of a viscosity to this and once you really work that into the skin it just soaks in it kind of plumps everything up you get this really beautiful plumping effect from this for sure i like to seal this in with some other hydrating products as well over top but i do notice that initial kind of surge of moisture and it just makes my skin look really youthful so I have been applying this product from the tippy top of my big old forehead here all the way down to my chest. Um, just so you guys know, uh, all of my skincare, with the exception of tretinoin on my neck, because my neck is super sensitive, we'll get to that here in a second, but all of my skincare goes from here down to here, 
every morning, every evening. If you are ignoring your neck and your chest, may I encourage you to not do that. Um, they're going to start showing your age pretty quickly, especially if you're making some great progress with your skincare on your face. If you just leave your poor neck hanging, um, it's, yeah, it's just going to look sad. Treat your neck well. <laughs> Your neck supports your head, so take care of your neck, and then while you're at it, just keep bringing everything down, because why not, right? So anyway, will I repurchase this? I think that I will. Listen, the, I think I paid around $14, and I even had like an Amazon coupon for like another like three or four dollars off when I initially purchased this, but even at I think $15, this is a fabulous serum and I really hope that they offer this in a larger size here soon because I would absolutely repurchase this in either a two or a three ounce even. I love just slathering this all over myself. The plumping effect that I get, the fact that it just absorbs so quickly. I've been using it morning and night and yeah, it has worked just as well as the other copper peptide serums that I've been using in the past. So. Save yourself a little bit of money, I guess, and maybe try this one if you're in the market for a peptide serum. I don't know. I think it's really affordable, and I really think it's worth a try if you have an interest in, uh, in peptides. So next, we are going to talk about the Pharmacy Honey Glow 17% Resurfacing Acid Serum. This actually replaces the Honeymoon Glow, which is... One of the products that I really actually adored from Pharmacy and when they were going to discontinue it, I did purchase a couple bottles of the Honeymoon Glow. Um, turns out maybe I didn't necessarily have to do that because this formulation here, I think I might actually like this just as much, if not maybe a little bit better. Um, so let's discuss here. This product is supposed to help refine pores. It's supposed to help with uneven texture and it's supposed to obviously help with anti-aging as well. So you have a 17% lactic acid, sorry, a 17% acid blend in this formulation and your three acids are lactic acid, beta hydroxy acid, so they have willow bark extract in here. There is also grapefruit extract in here as well. Um, also in this formulation is Saccharomyces ferment, arginine, honey extract, propolis extract, royal jelly, as well as glycerin. So listen, even though this is a, I would say pretty strong in terms of the concentration of the acids type of formulation here, I find this to be so insanely gentle. I have had no drying effects from this at all. I have certainly used this on my face, but you know where I have been loving this and where it has made a huge difference? My chest area. So, you know, over the years of like being out in the sun, laying in tanning beds, you know, that, that damage accumulates over the years. And when you hit like your mid forties, all of a sudden your skin is like, guess what? We're going to bring all of this damage to the surface now, so enjoy. Um, anyway, so I was really starting to notice some initial like little age spots, just some discoloration that really I'd never noticed in the past before. And so I have started applying this every single evening before going to bed and then going over top with whatever moisturizer I'm using on the rest of my face. You guys, look at how bright this skin looks. Like, it really is starting to like even out the skin tone on this area of my chest here. And this was really where I had the bulk of discoloration kind of starting. I used to wear a lot of V-necks, a lot of scoop necks, and I would never protect my chest when I was out in the sun. I just was like, great, I'm getting a tan here. That sounds fantastic. Also, like I said, I spent years laying in tanning beds. I was a teenager in the 90s and then in the early 2000s, I thought it was an even better idea to get a tanning membership. I had one of the memberships. <laughs> what was it, like Republic, Tan Republic, I think it was called. Oh gosh, I can't. I can't even believe I did that. Anyway, moral of the story is I have some accumulated damage that I'm trying to undo here. And you guys, this so gentle, no stinging at all. And 
it's easy to use, like no irritation and it's working. It's brightening this whole area up. Uh, I feel like this is kind of a rock star product here. Um, I will say, uh, you know, if you loved the Honeymoon Glow, I think you're probably going to enjoy this one as well. So if you've been a little mad about the discontinuation of the Honeymoon Glow, I think this is an adequate replacement. Personally, I think this is probably a more than adequate replacement for that product. But that being said, I've had really great luck with this. I don't find it to be irritating at all to my skin. Um, I have also used it on my neck with no irritation at all. And like I mentioned, the one area on my body that is actually sensitive is my neck. My chest is not really, my face is definitely not, but I do have to be a little bit more mindful just about this area right here. And I've been able to use this on my neck without any irritation. So I feel like if you have a sensitive skin, it might be worth taking a chance on this one. You can purchase uh, pharmacy products at Sephora. So if you have a reaction to it, you can definitely, you know, just return it. But I don't know, you might really like this one. I think it's worth checking out. Okay, next we are going to move on to a product that I recently picked up from Dermatology. Um, one thing that I forgot to mention is that I do deal with melasma on my, it's mostly on my forehead. I have this kind of weird patch that just takes up like the middle part of my forehead here. And it is aggravated by two things. The first is my hormones and the second is the sun. If I go out in the sun without any SPF, and especially if it is like a super intense sunny day, if I'm not wearing a hat, sometimes even the SPF doesn't matter. It will just immediately cause that melasma to flare up. And it's really frustrating because once that like hyperpigmentation starts to kick in, it can be a frustrating process to try to get rid of it. I am someone who has had a hydroquinone prescription in the past. I'm actually getting ready to see the dermatologist again this week, and I am gonna have them renew the hydroquinone prescription just so that I have it when the melasma gets really bad, but we all know you cannot use hydroquinone on any type of long-term basis. You have to cycle with it. It's been a really long time since I've used it. Um, my last prescription expired, so, and, well, and I finished it anyway, so, um, but I have not been back to the dermatologist to re-up that. So while I'm getting my skin cancer scan done, um, I'm gonna go ahead and ask for a refill. But that being said, I like to use over-the-counter, if at all possible, to fade my melasma. So when I found the Hydrofader on the Dermatology website, first of all, I was like, how did I not know that this product existed? I'd never heard anyone talking about this particular product. So I went ahead, popped it in my cart. I've been using it now for at least six weeks. This is supposed to help with uneven skin tone. It's supposed to help with the firmness of your skin. Um, and it's supposed to help calm sensitive skin. So specifically, this is supposed to address dark spots, melasma, and hyperpigmentation without hydroquinone. So um, the way that you're doing that is with kojic acid in this formulation. I have found that for me, a combination of azelaic acid and trans transamic acid were a really great way to fade my melasma. But now that I have added kojic acid to that little duo of azelaic and transamic acid, I think I might have like the magic fix here in terms of over-the-counter products. Um, so in this formulation is not only the kojic acid, there's also ceramide NP, ceramide AP, ceramide EOP. So several different types of ceramides, which are going to be very soothing to the skin. There's also palmitol tripeptide 1, 7, and 5. There's panthenol in this formulation, and there's also aloe extract in this formulation. So really, your main active here is that kojic acid, and then you have a lot of other really great proven skincare ingredients that help to soothe the skin, that help to calm the skin. 
So one thing I can tell you is that this has caused zero irritation, even when layering with azelaic and transamic acid, at least in my routine, I'm not, you can test it out, but just know that it's, that might be a lot for your skin. You really have to know your skin in terms of what you pair together and what makes sense in your routine. Um, like I said, great results from the azelaic acid, great results from the transamic acid, but now that I've added in that kojic acid, you guys, that's the trifecta for my particular melasma patch here that seems to clear it up very, very quickly for me. Is it, again, as uh, aggressive as hydroquinone in terms of how fast and effective? No. I mean, this is still going to take a little bit longer, but if you just don't want to use hydroquinone, that might be a trio of ingredients that might be worth trying. It's working for me. I mean, this forehead is looking pretty good these days. Um, I do have makeup on, obviously, over top of my melasma here, but it's very faint right now. Um, yeah, so anyway, big fan of that. I will be repurchasing that for sure. But I also look forward just to having the hydroquinone back when, when I just want it gone quickly. So, all right, the last, the last product we're going to talk about is the new Paula's Choice Pro Retinaldehyde Dual Retinoid Treatment. Um, in full disclosure, this item here was sent to me in PR, so I did not pay for this. Um, I still get absolutely giddy about Paula's Choice, like recognizing my channel in any kind of way. So I started my skincare journey um, over 10 years ago now with Paula's Choice. Like that was where I decided, okay, I'm going to try products from one company. It's going to be Paula's Choice. I'm going to use them consistently and I'm going to see what this does for my skin. And you guys, the products really got me started on my skincare journey. And there are still a few products that I am repurchasing to this day. First of all, the Paula's Choice BHA cleared up all of the blackheads on my face. Like it was miraculous. That BHA 9, what a game changer. If you deal with very stubborn blackheads, you need to try the BHA 9. Um, also, the 20% niacinamide serum that I rave about so frequently, I nothing has ever had more of an impact on the look of my pores than that niacinamide serum. I'll link both of those products down below as well. Total game changers. Um, so Paula's Choice is just one of those skincare brands that I go back to time and time again, and it just makes me really giddy that they even know who I am. So anyway, I received this item in PR. Uh, all opinions are still going to be my own. Sometimes they have sent me things that just were not the best fit for my skin type. So listen, it happens. Not everything is going to be for every single skin type. This product, however, has been pretty darn good. Um, I mentioned that my neck is very sensitive, so I cannot use tretinoin on this area at all. I can use over-the-counter retinoids, retinaldehydes, things like that. I can even use bacuchiol, but I cannot use tretinoin. Um, so I went ahead and the bacuchiol uh, cream that I was using, I removed that from my routine and opted to put this in place just for this neck area specifically. So this is the only area on my body that I've been testing this product is on my neck. So that is how I will be reviewing it for this video. So this product is intended to reduce fine lines and wrinkles, help with uneven skin texture, and also help with acne and blemishes. So your key ingredients here are retinaldehyde. This is actually a, can, uh, a calcium encapsulated retinaldehyde and that is going to help reduce potential irritation. There is a dapinoid, um, which is a oil soluble retinoid that bioconverts to promote clearer skin. And then there is also pomegranate peel extract in this formulation, which supports collagen and just kind of helps to smooth the skin out. So, um, first of all, love the texture of this product. Um, it is a very unnatural color of yellow, I will say. 
that kind of freaked me out a little bit at first. Um, you can see the color there. But it does have a really nice texture to it. It's not a very heavy feeling product and it does absorb into the skin rather quickly. And I don't know if you've noticed, but I really like when products don't sit on top of my skin. I think it's because I have an oily skin type. I'm just very sensitive to things like feeling oily or greasy on my skin. And this very, again, very quickly absorbs into the skin so you're not left feeling like tacky or sticky or anything like that. Um, so non-irritating. Listen, this neck of mine can be very, very sensitive. I can use this morning and night. Now I do put the, uh, I'm using a barrier repair cream from Dermatology right now. I do put that on over top. I don't know if I necessarily need to, but I just do it anyway. And that has certainly been a great combination for me. I feel like this line on my neck, the more that I use these like retinoids, retinaldehydes, the bacuchiol and things like that, the more that this line is really starting to fade just a little bit. I don't think it'll ever fade completely because quite honestly, I am constantly looking down at my phone like most of us are looking down at our phone all day long, right? And um, when you do that, you start developing these lines in your neck. So I don't know, I'm just looking to keep them looking as soft as possible at this point. I don't think I'm going to be able to eliminate them. It just is what it is. But I do like how much softer that line looks after um, incorporating this into my routine. And just the overall tone and texture of, this, of the skin on my neck is very clear. Um, I, this has been super gentle, you guys. If you have really sensitive skin, if you cannot use tretinoin on your face, like I can use tretinoin on my face and I do. That's why I don't use this on my face. It's just not gonna give me, you know, the type of results that I'm used to at this point with tretinoin. But on my neck, this has been an absolutely fabulous product. And if you struggle with sensitivities, this might be worth checking out. So again, you can also find this, uh, out, you know, outside of obviously the Polish Choice website, you can find Polish Choice products now at Sephora. So I will link this down below at Sephora if you're interested. It might make the return a little bit easier if for whatever reason this product doesn't work out for you. But anyway, you guys, those are my updates of the uh, four most recent products that I incorporated into my routine and how things are going. So far, so good. I see myself repurchasing uh, probably most of these products. Um, I mean, for sure, this is an amazing price point. This is a really good replacement for the Honeymoon Glow and this Kojic Acid here, big old game changer, like I said, for my melasma. So yeah, I think maybe this might be the only question in terms of do I wanna keep using this or some of the other products that also work really well on my neck in terms of helping to improve the overall tone and texture of the skin there. So. Anyway, for what it's worth, those are my thoughts, my opinions. Let me know if you guys have any questions. I appreciate you being here. Subscribe if you're new. Give this video a thumbs up if you found it helpful, and I'll see you in the next one. Take care. Toodaloo.